Um, just as you were talking then about some of those benefits, I was thinking about one of my students last year. I happened to teach at my school a boy who ended up being the ducks of the school. And this, this student, and you know, he was the one on the awards night. He got every award there was. He played yep. uh, French horn. He was in all the bands. He did the sport that he needed to do. And he was playing at high level, MSA kind of level, and practicing every week. It was absolutely remarkable. Mm. And as you know, this, this month I'm kind of focusing on practice and motivation because it is – it can be so difficult these days to get kids to do the practice. And we'll talk more about that later. But when I, when I think about this young man who was so busy and studying so hard, but he still found the time to practice. Mm. And then look at my year nines or whatever it is who just do five minutes every two days or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and, and say so they're so busy and they, they don't have time. You know, what, what are we missing here? Why, why is that kind of the case for these students? Well, there's one interesting thing. It's interesting you mentioned year nine. Because part of what has helped me understand, I did a lot of research before I started this area of research on boys' music education, particularly in year seven and eight. And my frustration was, why would they up and quit an instrument they were playing for the past four years? They seemingly loved, they were involved in all the groups, and then suddenly it was like, no, I'm giving up, or I'm going to play guitar instead of playing trumpet. It's like, what's what's happening here? Do I have any influence on this, or, or can I do something? So. What's helped me with the neuroscience is understanding that the brain has cycles and growth cycles and they're now sort of starting to pin them down. The first one is between zero and seven and the brain is just growing and growing. We talk about kids as, as a sponge. And then at the seven years of age, they do something without us knowing, the brain does, it does something called pruning, which is exactly what it sounds like. The brain takes to all of its different areas with a huge scythe and goes, I don't need that, haven't used that, that's not useful, I've integrated that already, so it's not good. Um, and they do it again at around 14. So it got me thinking about what have I experienced on the outside of these students at 14. So say they've been learning, I'm a clarinet teacher, they've been doing that with me for four years and then they just seem to, there's lack of focus, they don't practice, their timetable goes all out of whack, they could arrive in any mood. Um, under the sun <laughs> and it, this research got me thinking about my practice with kids of that age because I used to just think you just need to hold on that a little bit longer get them through to about 15 and they, they seem to come out of it mm. but it's actually neurologically there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on and that is influenced very seriously by puberty as well so they're not concentrating on what I'm talking about at all because yeah. there's so much going on inside their bodies it helped me to go, okay, how would I adjust my teaching? How would I change my approach to practice? What are their motivations at that age considering so much is actually going on? And they do come out of it. And the thing is, by the time you see that wonderful kid in year 12, a French player who's ducks, they've done all the pruning, they've got some extra space in their brain, but also they've hit that intrinsic motivational stage when they go, I actually really love this for me. This makes me feel good. I feel successful. Um, I can see the direct pattern between if I practice here, I get this result and I feel good, so I'll practice some more, so I'll feel good. And that, that happens by the end of year 12. But we have these, it's not a, it's not a straight line. It's a different flow all the way through that we, I think, as music teachers need to be able to respond to but also know more about what might be going on for those students. Can you remember back to what you changed about your teaching, if anything, for those 14-year-olds that were all over the place and pruning in their brains going on yeah. to try and keep them engaged? Yes. I tested out a lot of things, but sort of by accident, I was finding more out about this research and I would share it with my students. So, so I'd explicitly say, do you know what's going on in your head right now? <laughs> really? I would, yeah, I would come up with these little things like, you know, there's a little Grim Reaper and he's scything away in there and they think that was hilarious. They thought that was fun. <laughs> And I'd say that's what's going on and that's why it's really hard for you to focus as long as you have been able to. And then I'd talk about, because again with boys, they would grow and they'd be able to play a note and then the next week they couldn't because their fingers had got that much longer. <laughs> so important. I'd say I'd talk to them explicitly about this is what's happening inside your body, this is how it's playing out on the outside and that's why you're not feeling you're getting so far ahead. And I didn't mean to do it but I found that giving them the information explaining it to them um, but also getting them to reflect on how they were feeling gave them a language for the frustration they were feeling. And I also said it's going to stop. If this, this two will pass, you know, you're going to get 15, you're going to get 16, this is not going to happen anymore. And it's sort of like through knowledge, through information, they 
became far more, they, they were the master of their musical development, not what's happening to me, I feel awful, therefore I will quit. Yeah, I can't play, it's all useless while I'm yeah. doing this. Now, I could play these notes last week, I can't get them to say. The funniest ones I find are trombone players. Seventh position used to be there and now it's there. <laughs> yeah. You know, clarinet not so hard, but it's 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 really is just for the boys, particularly making them explicit, making it explicit, but also making the emotion explicit, and saying you will feel frustrated, and frustration looks like this for you, or it looks like this. For, it's different. Yeah. Work with that because, and then I would talk about the brain. So I have had wonderful responses from my students with the video because they someone's passed it on on Facebook or something. They've watched it and they've seen a little bit at the end that says Anita Collins. And they've come to me in band the next day and gone, was that you? Like, yeah. And I go, you're famous. <laughs> That's worse. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. But they say, and then they start talking. So it's actually I've been surprised at how much they've interacted with it but also how knowledge is power. Yeah. Knowledge for them has helped them to, to continue and get past that uncomfortable stage. It's really interesting that this is exactly the reason that I want to speak to someone like you because, you know, most of us and me included will, will try and think of activities to do with the students or ways of approaching particular music or musical choices. But you're like, actually, no. I mean, that might work, but yeah, my, my tactic was actually to talk to them about what's actually going on in their bodies yeah. and their brains at this stage yeah. so that they have some knowledge about why they're actually feeling as they are. I think that's, yeah. that's fantastic. It's such a yeah. good... Good tip, and I know that many people who are watching this could potentially try that with those students at that age. Yeah, and it's it fits in with once I saw I saw myself doing it, but more importantly, I saw the reaction of the boys. It fits in with a lot of particularly the boys' research to say relationships are king. Yeah, relationship you have with your teacher is so important, and all this is is developing that relationship in a different kind of way. Hey, just before you go, make sure you click here to subscribe and we've got thousands of other videos all on the topic of music education and teaching. So make sure you check out some of those other ones here and I'll see you in the next video.